Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Despot Symphonic Warrior deck yet again. This is a fun little project that I've been having a good time with as far as testing. It's definitely a rogue option, and that is why this set of videos and this set of games is definitely amongst the Table 500 series of, uh, of stuff. But it's definitely one of the more strong options as far as, like, something I would consider a Table 500 deck. It's definitely got a lot more firepower behind it uh, than anything else that I've come across that is remotely like in the rogue like cesspool of not capable of competing because at least this deck is capable of putting out huge amounts of damage it's also capable of putting out cyber dragon infinity rather on command recently with the way this build is structured now and stuff like that uh, that is definitely just such a fun option now there's definitely things that I wish to tweak about this list uh, this is definitely just one of the things I've been testing uh, I went into a gear Auger engine and this is something that people brought up in the comment section of the previous video that I played this deck for because I was not playing this engine in that list uh, but I kind of stumbled back upon this while I was looking through some old decks and I found one of my old gear Gear lists and then I reread gear Auger, and I was like wait a second gear Gear Auger is a one card gigant and gigant allows you to search Ancient Gearbox, and Ancient Gearbox does allow you to access literally every Despot card, and then Gigant also lets you search guitars, so like, this basically is a pseudo starter card, and also it's another machine dupe target and all that sort of nonsense, but then people in the comment section of the last video I put up also started suggesting things along the lines of Augur, and things like the Terra Top Engine as well, but that involves you running like shitty Kara Curry cards, and I'm not about to like play more Garnets than I already am and stuff like that, so not playing the Terra Top Engine in here because I just don't think that it's worth it as far as the space, because if you draw those Kara Curry tuners, like you are literally just shit up a creek uh, without any sort of like just response, and it also does eat up one of your normal summons, which is kind of irritating uh, because you have to search for the, uh, the red-eyed dice, uh, but I mean, eh. It's, it might be a possible addition in the future, but as of right now, I've really been liking the addition of Gear Gyogre, the Accelerator, and the Ancient Gearbox, because Ancient Gearbox being a free discard for your guitars and your Twin Twisters uh, just makes the cards really free, which is actually insane, but then Gear Gyogre plus Machine Dupe, or Gear Gyogre plus 3, or Gear Gyogre plus Guitar just automatically lets you get into one of your Cyber Dragon Infinity plays, and all that sort of stuff, and then, like I said, like Ancient Gearbox is really value-based. Uh, there's just tons of good things I could say about this, and the reason I'm playing 2 Gigant in the extra deck is because of the Machine Dupe plays that you can do with Augur. So you can go Augur, Search Accelerator, Machine Dupe, the other ones out, make Double Gigant, and off of your Double Gigant you can search your, uh, your guitars, and then search an Ancient Gearbox, searching Despot 3. So then you automatically have the discard for your guitars, and you have the Despot 3, which you can normal summon in your Despot 5, which then goes with the mics into Infinity. There's just tons of, like, niche little interactions, but the deck has more starter cards now than it ever has before. Uh, since I've been playing it, and that's something that I'm really a huge fan of. But anyway, let's stop rambling on about this nonsensical deck list, and let's just get straight into the first game and see how it performs with these new additions and this new added consistency that it ha seems to have access to. Uh, so let's just let's just do that. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, going into the first game, my opponent won Rock, Paper, Scissors, and he gets to start, but unfortunately for him, I am the Master Duelist and I open with one ofs, including Ancient Gear Box, and more importantly, Maximum C. So he starts with an Ice Bell into a Glass Bell, and unfortunately he just has to continue into my Max C or else he's not able to make a play, and he's already given me a plus one because of how Ice Bell's interaction with Max C works. It's a very, very unfavorable interaction uh, in the form of when Ice Bell summons itself, it summons itself and then as a separate action summons Glass Bell from the deck. So you will draw two cards off Max C. The same thing with Magician's Navigate. Magician's Navigate will summon a Dark Magician from your hand and then a level seven Spellcaster from your deck as two separate actions. So even though it is one card effect resolving, it is two separate special summons that the game state recognizes and thus you get two Max C draws. So just another reason why I ultimately just don't like the card design uh, in terms of how Ice Bell interacts. But so with all the cards that I got off this Max C, I'm able to just push his throat in. Now I actually had game this turn if I had thought to use my second Despot 3 that was being negated by Crystal Wings effect to pump the other Despot 3's attack points up in value. If I had thought to do that then I would have had a game shot on board uh, very very easily very effectively but it's whatever. I've got a Cyber Dragon Infinity, my opponent is low on cards, I have a good amount of knowledge of what his deck is trying to do. I know that it invests a lot into its plays that it makes outside of the Ice Bell Terra Top engine. Uh, like, it's got a lot of stuff, like the Monster Mash engine, as far as decks go, 
the only real deck that I've seen that was really capable of making a lot of plays very effectively was the water version of uh, Monster Mash, like Water Mash, because then you had all these grave effects that were triggering and stuff like that. So, outside of Ice Bell and uh, Terra Top, his deck doesn't really have that many one card plays, so you're able to just get value off of that based off what you negate at what point. But so, next game, I opened two one ofs yet again, the exact same two one ofs, Max C and Ancient Gearbox. What is up with these cards and why do they love me and why do they love my hands? But anyway, Maxi is that card that just is really unlucky if your opponent draws it, and I drew it, and so he just has to play into it because, again, he Ice Belled, and I got to draw two cards, so he's already committed into a plus one without even realizing or like having any say in the matter. So <laughs> there's not really much he can do about it other than just commit into it, but so at this point, dealing with a Crystal Wing that's indestructible by card effects is super easy to deal with. Because all you have to do is bait one of its negations, and then you suck it up with Chris, with uh, with uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity. It's very easy to deal with. Very, very much something that's easy and not very strenuous. Now here, I had game in like four different ways, but I missed all of those game shots as far as how I should have done them. One, I just didn't attach off my Digesto Phoenix. Two, if I had made Trishula and banished his Chambara instead of making Trishula main phase two, and then detached off Digesto Phoenix, that would have been game. Uh, if I had attacked with the, my weakest monster in the, into the uh, Chambara first to force the Cyber Dragon Infinity negate on it and then still have other bigger monsters to attack with instead of attacking with the Cyber Dragon Infinity, then I would have also had game. <laughs> There's multiple different things that could have just amounted to me having a game shot, but no big deal. I, he's very low on cards. I've got a Cyber Dragon Infinity up. I've got a commanding lead as far as the game goes, and I'm just able to win off of that now. Game 3, even though he lost the previous game, he tells me to go first because he's like, fuck this, I'm not going second and having my board broken again. We're not dealing with this shit. We'll just summon Ice Bell and do our own thing. So, my hand is kind of weak as far as an opening goes. If I had Gear Geoger or, um, or a Machine Dupe or Symphonic Warrior Guitars, I would have had a much better situation. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So, I just summoned Despot 3. And, uh, and summon my two, get a search, and then pass with a strike. And I have a Raigeki, so when he goes to summon his Crystal Wing that's indestructible by card effects, I just strike it. So he's locked under Ice Bell. He's used a lot of his stuff as far as his uh, as far as his engine pieces. I'm sure he probably does an extra deck two Crystal Wings, so I don't feel like I'm going to have to deal with Crystal Wing again for the rest of the game if I strike it there. And then I'm able to flip over Raigeki on the rest of his board that he commits into. So not really much that has to be said and done there. I'm just capable of going into a very large amount of play off of a Gear Auger that I have access to that I believe I drew for a turn, so I'm not able to declare any attacks, but I am able to set up a Cyber Dragon Infinity, which is very good because, again, with the knowledge of what his deck is capable of doing with like the Gallus stuff that he has uh, meshed in, the fact that it's a Monster Mash deck using the Terra Top, the Wind Witch, the Symphonic Warrior Engine, all that sort of nonsense, outside of his Ice Bells and his Terra Tops, he doesn't have that many one-card plays. Everything else has to dedicate a lot of resources into it as far as making plays. And that's where the weakness that I'm able to pick apart in his deck essentially lies. Because I'm able to basically force him into certain play strings where he has to make things. Like in the last turn, really the only thing he could have done was make that Trishula and hope that I don't negate it with Cyber Dragon Infinity. But, unfortunately, I have a Cyber Dragon Infinity and I'm not dumb as far as, as, far as I'd like to think that I am at least. I don't think that I'm an idiot, but sometimes things just slip my mind. But look at how much damage is on board. Two 2,000 attack Despot 3s, two 2,700 attack Cyber Dragon Infinities, and a, and a uh, I guess, the Phoenix Singer attack twice. Like, Jesus, look at that. But so, again, I've opened with Ancient Gear Box. Now, both of us, this game, opened kind of bricky, but his brick constitutes opening a lot of tuners that are sort of meaningless and no real starter card in the form of Ice Bell, Terra Top, or Guitars. But my brick in cons constitutes me machine duping my Despot 5s into three Despot 5s and still making a Cyber Dragon Infinity and then setting a Solemn Strike. Because when this deck gets kind of bricky, at least you're able to establish big monsters in the essence of you have Symphonic Warrior guitars, some of Mike's out of deck, you have Pendulum access into getting Pendulum cards out of your hand as far as like the Pendulum monsters usually are stacked up and clumped up in those regards. A bunch of other stuff uh, goes into it as well. But I really actually do miss Despot base in this deck. I might play it as a one over or a two of just to search it off Despot 2 when I'm doing multiple searches. Because of the fact that like it corrects hands when you do have access into it, 
and then also it does higher, heighten your damage output and stuff like that, so there's a lot of things that are good that can be said about it that might be worth some slots being uh, dedicated back to it, but so, last game, my opponent opens with Ice Bell, I don't have the maxi this time, so he's able to just do his stuff, and he makes a Crystal Wing that's indestructible and a Clear Wing, and so my hand isn't really that good as far as things, and now, I don't know if you're able to negate Ice Bell with uh, Ash, Bl Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, but the prompt didn't come up for me on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, so whether or not you're able to negate it or not, I'm not actually sure. I'd imagine you would be able to negate it, but I could actually just be wrong. But anyway, I actually get punished this game uh, because the game plan was I was going to use Warning to prevent him from summoning something from the extra deck, keep the Solemn Strike until my next turn, Pendulum my Despot 5 out, and then use mics, or use guitars to get a mics, and then I have Cyber Dragon Infinity. I could use Cyber Dragon Infinity to suck up his, uh, attempt to suck up his Crystal Wing. He's going to negate it with Clear Wing very clearly because I can still negate with uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity, and then his Crystal Wing would be able to negate Cyber Dragon Infinity. You know, it's a four, four chain link, you know, thing where he would come out on top of that. But I have Solemn Strike, so I could just strike his Clear Wing. That was the game plan the entire time. But I snap negated the Gallus with Solemn Warning, and that was 100% correct. With the knowledge that I know about his deck having to, you know, take multiple resources to get any sort of extra deck play moving. I don't know why I was so afraid of the Gallus that I just snap warninged it when I did. I should have definitely waited for him to commit more resources into an extra deck monster and then warninged it, because then I probably would have been in a good situation life point wise to where I could have done the play where I force a Cyber Dragon Infinity through with Solemn Strike that basically clears his board because I suck up his Clear Wing and then his his uh I suck up his Crystal Wing and then his Clear Wing gets negated by the Strike so he has no say in the matter and then I have a Cyber Dragon Infinity on my board that it needs to be opposed while he has one or no cards so there was a lot of different things that could have gone right for me in that scenario but I just played very poorly as far as snap negating the warning and I got punished for that so he won a game which was great I'm actually really good that he was able to I'm really glad rather that he was able to punish me for making such a schoolboy error in the fact that I knew how his deck operated and there's almost no reason for me to warning that Gallus other than the fact that I just made a quick instinctive reaction that should not have been done. I should have kept myself calm, should have kept my you know idea of my next turn's play string in mind, all that sort of stuff, but ultimately I got a little bit too carried away in the moment, snap negated it, and I got punished for it, and that's something that I'm glad happened, because you don't really see that a lot in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Even in the context of Table 500 and Rogues, like, matchups, like, the fact that, like, people just don't get punished for incorrect play as much anymore, because the decks that you're playing are so, like, user-friendly as far as like what they're capable of doing and they're so good on recovery that even if you make a slight misstep like that sometimes you just don't get punished for it and so I'm kind of glad that something like that still exists in Yu-Gi-Oh even if it is only on the table 500 and rogue deck spectrum so kind of made me smile a bit when it happened even though I was kind of irritated that I just absolutely punted the game like that by just snap negating with the warning like I said I had knowledge of what his deck does and with only a Gallus he's not making anything that's threatening my life I have to wait until he starts putting more things into his uh, extra deck summons and then I have to deal with it but so it just ended up being downhill from there, and I ended up getting punished for it. And I'm, like I said, I'm glad that that sort of thing can still exist in Yu-Gi-Oh, even if it is only on the rogue spectrum of gameplay. But anyway, as always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and all that sort of nonsense. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook and my Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly and help me make content and help my channel grow and do things in the future that I don't think might be possible now, they definitely are pipe dreams that I want to handle in the future, then definitely go check out the Patreon page. Link is in the description, as I've already said. And check out the reward tiers. One of the reward tiers gets you access to my private Discord server, which is where Dance King came from. It's where all the people that I've played in the past couple of months have come from, because I just love to like shoot the shit with these people in my Discord server, and then I always go to them for games, for testing, all that sort of stuff. And it's just a ripe old merry group of people. But other than that, there's also a monthly giveaway that I do at the end of each month for the people that have supported me on Patreon. The details of that, including what I'm giving away at the end of this month, should be be on my Patreon feed for all to see, even if you are not a donor. So definitely go check that out if you are interested, and you can get details on the giveaway there as well. But other than that, if you want to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So definitely check out their site, and let them know the Phoenix sent you. But other than that, as always, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thank you for your time, as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.